Hello, uh, my name is Elise and I'm a member of the church and today I will be reading New Shoes by Susan Lynn Meyer. My cousin Charlotte hands me the package as we stand outside Johnson's shoes. If you could have any shoes in the window, I ask. my toes. I show Mama. Mama says, we'll just have to scrape together money for new shoes. Shoes I pick out myself? I can't believe it. On Saturday, we're going to Johnson. On Saturday morning when we walk in, the bell jingles. Mr. Johnson looks our way. Behind us, the door jingles again. A girl with yellow curls walks in with her, Daddy. Mr. Johnson heads towards them. Mama and I walk to the back of the store and stand against the wall. That blonde-haired girl tries on shoes, posing in front of the mirror. I sigh. Weren't we here first? But I know colored people always have to wait. Finally, the girl's daddy buys her a new pair of shoes, and they leave. How can I help you now, Mr. Johnson says to us. I point to a display of saddle shoes. I want to try those on, sir, I say. I hear Mama suck in her breath. Oh, we'll do something different, LMA, she says. We'll make a picture of your feet for Mr. Johnson. But, I start to say, pencil and paper all over there, gal, Mr. Johnson says to Mama. Mama traces my feet. Mr. Johnson takes the paper and comes back with a shoebox. Mama holds the shoes next to me. Mr. Johnson fidgets. Yes, I think these will fit, Mama says, and she counts out money. Rain is pouring down when we leave. Mama snaps open her umbrella. Mama, I say, can't color folks try on shoes? Mama says no, but then she puts on a smile. Let's we'll think about how nice your feet will look for school. I like my shoes, but it isn't fair that the other girl can try them on and I can't. Mama and I walk on together, listening to the rain. The next day in the schoolyard, I show Charlotte my shoes, but then I tell about what happened at Char Johnson's. Charlotte nods. That's happened to me too, she whispers. Even though I have new shoes, I feel bad most of the day. But then during spelling, I have an idea. I tell Charlotte as we walk home. Yes, she says, I'll help. So Charlotte and I do chores. We scrub, we pick the last green beans, we mind babies. Most folks say they can't do much. Never mind, I say. We'll work for a nickel and a pair of outgrown shoes. At the end of the month, we line up the shoes on empty shelves in the old bar next to our house. Charlotte scoops up the coins. I'll go buy the polish, she says. While she is gone, I clean the shoes with soft rags, then I pull out all the dirty shoelaces. I wash them in lots of soapy water until the water squeezes until the water squeezes off them clean. I hang the laces on the clothesline to dry in the sun.
Charlotte comes running back. I call Red, she says. She uses a nickel to pry open the red pen, and I open the black. I take a pair of shoes and rub the polish in. Then I scrunch up my hand inside, smoothing out all the wrinkles and buff the shoes until they shine. The sun has dried the laces now. I thread them back through the holes. Charlotte holds up the shiny red Mary Jane she has been buffing. Almost as good as new, she says proudly. The neighbors know we are ready to open even before the paint on our sign is dry. Ellen May and Charlotte's shoes, it says. Price. 10 cents and another used pair. Mrs. Douglas peeps in the barn door holding little Laura's hand. Right behind them I see more neighbors coming. Look at this, Mrs. Douglas marvels. No need to go to Johnson's now. Then she hesitates. Last time the shoes from Johnson's gave my Laura blisters, she says. Can she try these on to see which ones fit best? Charlotte and I smile. We hold our heads up proud. Yes, ma'am, she can, I say loud and clear. In our store, anyone who walks in the door can try on all the shoes they want. <laughs>